Hi, I'm Florian Echou and I'm recording this video to present my work accepted at the Conference of Gain 2020. In this video, I will present the main features of Microphantome about playing macro artists. It's the first time I record a video instead of giving a scientific presentation and for that I would like to take the occasion to propose something a bit different. So as you can see, I'm recording outside in the streets of Tokyo. Syoji was planned in Osaka, but because of the pandemic situation, it has been moved completely online this year. And I know many of you are disappointed not for coming in Japan. So before starting my presentation, here is a little bit of Japan. So I'm making about playing macro artists and handling a combinatorial optimization problem under uncertainty by using a method mixing both constraint programming and decision theory. Let's introduce all of that first. Here is a screenshot of micro RTS. So it's a two-player game, blue against red, uh, played on a grid. So units can move from their current cell to a free adjacent cell. So it's somehow a discrete game. There is not a lot of different units and buildings in micro RTS. So you have just two different buildings, bays and barracks. Bays are used to produce workers and they collect resources. There is just one kind of resource in the game, uh, the green cell, which is gathered by workers. The barracks is used to produce military units. So you have a light unit in a range, uh, the range unit in blue, which is the only unit able to attack at distance, and the heavy unit, a large yellow unit. So, like most RTS games, there is a fog of war in Marco RTS, preventing you to see the whole map at the same moment. So, for instance, here we see the sight range of the blue player, and we see that he is able to see this red unit, but at this moment he is not able to see the rest of the red army and these uh, red buildings. So, in Marco RTS, there is a kind of rock, paper, scissors scheme, in the sense that the light unit is good usually against the range unit, which is good against heavy, which is good against light. So knowing this rock paper scissors scheme, and knowing also that you have a fog of war preventing players to have a full complete information about the game state, there is this very challenging problem within micro RTS, the unit production problem or UPP. So it's a problem that I define as follows. Uh, given imperfect information about the enemy army composition, what units should I produce to counter the enemy army? This problem is a combinatorial optimization problem under uncertainty. And in this video, I will show you how did I combine constraint programming and decision theory to handle this problem. Constraint programming is used to model and solve combinatorial problems. There exists actually a lot of different formalism within constraint programming to handle uncertainty. However, none of them are really convenient to deal with the unit production problem. I won't give you any details in this video. If you want to know more, I invite you to read the paper. On the other hand, you have decision theory, which is used to make decision under uncertainty, but you cannot handle combinatorial aspects with decision theory. So, to deal with the unit production problem, I somehow merge both constraint programming and decision theory. So, I choose to not make a technical video. I won't show you the exact constraint programming model of the unit production problem in this video. If you want to know more, again, I invite you to read the paper. Here, in this slide, I just give you the big picture how did I combine constraint programming with decision theory. So, I modeled the unit production problem uh, in constraint programming with a very classic 
uh, model. So I have my variables, my domain, I have some constraints uh, telling me, for instance, that I cannot spend more money than I have and I have um, an objective function f that I want to maximize. Here I want to optimize my army composition to be the best counter of the enemy army composition. But you see the problem here. I know my units, what my units are, I know what I can produce, but I don't know exactly at this moment how many light, range and heavy units my enemy possess. So to handle this uncertainty, I use de decision theory, and to be more specific, I use rank dependent utility. So here, um, in these four steps, of course, it's more complicated than that, but I just quickly show how did I combine, how did I use uh, constraint programming, and to be more specific, how did I uh, call the objective function of my model within um, uh, the rank dependent utility computation. So first, you need to sample the number of enemy units of each type, light, range, and heavy. So to do so, uh, first I make a quick simulation of the enemy economy to have an idea, a rough idea, how many resources he can spend on units. And then I draw such number from um, from distributions. At the beginning of the game, the distribution for light units, heavy and range units are uniform, but these distributions are changing on the fly during the game. For instance, if I see that my enemy is producing a lot of light units, then I will have a higher chance to draw a large number of light units. Okay. So now I have a sample of my enemy units. So I can compute my objective function f with my variables v, I know them, these are my variables, and with the sampled uh, enemy units. So I can compute my object function. objective function, give me an output, which is actually a score on my decision. So my decision here is the value of my variables, that is uh, how many light range and heavy units I plan to produce. And I repeat step one and step two k times. So in micro phantom k is 50. So I get at the end 50 outputs here that I need to sort. This is required by a rank dependent utility. Again, all the details are in the paper. And then I can compute the rank dependent utility value. The higher the value and the better my decision is. So Micro Phantom is based on PO Adaptive, a boat playing macro artists I co-designed two years ago. PO Adaptive won the partially observable track of the 2018-2019 micro artists competitions, but there were room for improvement. So here I will present now the five main improvements in Micro Phantom. The first improvement concerns a new constraint programming model. So I will go quickly on that slide, but just to tell you that constraints are now represented by error functions, which makes uh, the life of the solver easier. Um, I kept the two original constraints from PO Adaptive and I add a third one, preventing me to try to produce more units than available barracks. So if I just have two uh, free barracks, I cannot produce more than two units uh, at the same time. And inside the objective function, now I use a regulation function to penalize the fact that we uh, try to produce um, uh, an army that is not able to beat the guest army, enemy army composition. A second improvement uh, is about stochastic variable estimation, and this is a major improvement. So we have stochastic variables that represent the number of enemy units of each type, light, heavy, and range units. In PO Adaptive, uh, we built the distribution between uh, heavy, light, and uh, range units via replay analysis. And the major problem with that is that our replays will certainly not fit 
the current uh, strategy of our opponent right now in the game. So to fix this, uh, now in Micro Phantom, we start every game with a uniform distribution. So when we want to guess an enemy unit, we have exactly one third chance to pick up uh, uh, a heavy light or range unit. And then we update this distribution to um, make it not uniform anymore with enemy units that are currently in our uh, site range plus uh, enemy units that we saw previously with a weight to favor uh, units that we are currently seeing. And so now our distribution is built from statistics on our current opponent. So how can I uh, guess an enemy army composition? Um, I first make a, a quick simulation of my enemy economy. So uh, until my enemy has enough money, then I will repeat these three lines. I will uh, draw uh, an enemy uh, unit type. Let's say that I draw a light unit. Then I will update my enemy uh, money, uh, so it will be money minus the cost of a light unit, and I will increase the number of light units that my enemy possess. And that's it, I repeat this until my enemy has no money left. A third improvement, and it's also a major one, uh, concern chaotic robust decision making. For me, a chaotic environment is a game where game rules can change, either on the fly, during the game, in-game, or between two games. And by change rules, I am thinking about all game attributes. So it can be cost of units and buildings, uh, hit points, or damage. Um, it can be the speed of units, or the capacity of walkers, that is, the number of resources they are able to carry at the same time, and so on. Micro Phantom is able to, uh, ma to make decisions, uh, to do decision making um, in a way that is independent from all these attribute values. A fourth improvement concerns in-game fee function replacement. So I didn't speak about uh, fee function yet, so I will do it now. In uh, the rank dependent utility formula, you have fee functions that are um, probability deformation function that are used to tweak probabilities. And this is something very convenient because you can uh, model some behaviors like pessimism and optimism before taking a decision. So um, now in Micro Phantom, we can change fee function on the fly during a game. So we start by a, a neutral fee function, and if we uh, realize that we are losing the game, for instance, uh, we are losing a lot of units and we don't kill a lot of enemy units, then we will switch to a pessimistic fee function in order to, to uh, take more risks and to catch up the game. And last improvement, and actually definitely least, are all hard-coded features that uh, I added into uh, Microphantom. So, for instance, uh, Microphantom will produce more workers if there are some uh, resource patches, uh, a lot of resource patches uh, around the base. It will produce more barracks if uh, he cannot spend all the money quickly and it will also um, produce uh, the two units that, are, uh, that can be trained as fast as possible and uh, in the regular rules those are light units on small maps, so maps uh, smaller than uh, 12 by 12 cells. About this last feature, uh, it has been disabled for experiments because this feature um, will change, uh, is changing the uh, production behavior. So to have a fair evaluation of the uh, unit production uh, problem solving, we disabled this uh, feature. So I will now introduce the experimental protocol that I follow to evaluate the unit production problem uh, solving within Microphantom. So I have a baseline board, which is exactly the same code as Microphantom, except that it will produce randomly a unit. 
and I have uh, three uh, different matchups. So the baseline boat versus PO Light Rush boat, which is the second best boat in the uh, Micro Artist competition in the uh, partially observable track. Micro Phantom versus the same boat and Micro Phantom versus the same boat on chaotic environments. I run uh, games on six basic maps, so without uh, walls or whatever, and eight more complex maps uh, taken from competitions that are called open maps in the next slide. On each map I run 100 games, 50 games at each starting position, and for decision making there is a timeout, a strict timeout of 100 milliseconds. So each time Macro Phantom uh, need to decide what unit it should be uh, producing next, it's always within 100 milliseconds. The score is computed as follow. Uh, if you win the game, you have one point. If you lose the game, you have zero points. And if there is a tie, both players has half a point. So here are the results. In tables that you see here, you have the average score over 100 games, meaning that if you have a score of 100, you win always the 100 games uh, in uh, all setups. Um, so uh, it's interesting to compare these results with the PO Adaptive 2019 results. Uh, also against baseline but with PO adaptive using a neutral optimistic or a pessimistic fee function uh, only on six basic maps and there are no chaotic environments at that time okay so first let's see at uh, baseline's score uh, we see a clear improvement here uh, of 50% uh, of the score and this is only due to the new hard-coded features this is very good because it gives us a, a way to measure improvement only done by hard-coded features. So a second thing uh, which is uh, relevant to, to observe is uh, the improvement uh, from the baseline to micro phantom, which is clearly, clearly more significant than the improvement for PO Adaptive from its baseline to uh, its different versions um, using different fee function. Um, both on basic and open maps, by the way. So this is very good because these improvements are only due to the uh, unit production behavior and not due to the hard-coded features because hard-coded features also are included into the baseline. And finally, we can observe performances of Micro Phantom on chaotic environments, which are roughly the same than performances uh, on games with regular rules, uh, which allow us to say that Micro Phantom uh, decision making on chaotic, uh, chaotic environments is quite robust. We can observe though a drop of performances on open maps and this is due actually to one specific map in one specific situation. I won't have time to explain what this situation is in this video but everything is explained in the paper. I know it sounds a bit magic like that but trust me there is a clear explanation for that. And actually without this uh, very very specific situation we could expect uh, a final score of 74 for micro phantom on chaotic environments, which is more coherent uh, with uh, the small difference we observe on basic maps. The good thing with the video, it's easy to do a demo and to make sure it works. So let's see a game together. So here is a game between micro phantom in blue and PO light rush in red. Uh, you can see that these two units are blocked each other because they are trying to go to the same cell and this is forbidden by the game. At the beginning of the game we spot several, several light units, so we are mainly producing heavy units, which is a perfect counter. Um, so a game is over when you destroy everything from, from your opponent, so all units and all buildings. Um, okay, so here we can see that uh, Micro Phantom is doing pretty good and this is certainly because he has uh, the right uh, army composition uh, to counter the light rush boat and it's pretty over, yeah, it's over now. Good game! I hope you enjoyed this video, it was really the first time for me to do this and now I have to do the video montage for the first time too. Please have a look at the paper and source code if you want more details about Micro Phantom and enjoy your COG online. Bye!